Hi everybody. Um, so uh, I uh, I wanted to design a system, a like a sci-fi system, a modular sci-fi system. Um, so this this is uh, GW stuff. This is uh, Warcry stuff, and um, you know we we use this constantly in like every game that we play, like every fantasy game. Um, but the the part of the reason why is because um, like when we play with it, we lay it out on like inch grids, and then uh, I um, I designed I started designing my own stuff around that. Like um, uh, this is uh, two inches high, you know, two inches square, so it's like a it's a, a two inch uh, cube, and. Uh, we, you know, like I, I did, um, I did my own like little wall system. Um, I used, um, I used some Hearst Arts molds and then I made my own molds and like made a little wall system that kind of keys together and uh, fits on a grid, an inch grid system. And then, you know, when you're, when we're moving, like if we're playing, well, like D&D &D and Frostgrave and things like that, especially like we just count the, the squares and it's, uh, it's, it works really, really well. And I love it. Like, I love how, how, um, efficient and it just, uh, really, really speeds up gameplay and it makes it more fun and like fluid and enjoyable. If I'm not constantly measuring with the measuring tape. Like I know if, if I run up to something like this in Frostgrave that I know that it's three inches high. So that's going to take me six inches of movement to get to the top and, so on and so forth. Um, so um, I started to um, buy into GW's system again. You know, I started to like collect the um, um, the Necromunda stuff, and um, it's it's kind of been a huge disappointment. Um, like, first off, I'm not as big of a fan of Space Gothic. You know, it just, it just doesn't do it for me. Like I, and I'm actually, you know, going through another breakup with uh, GW's games right now because of how they're treating the fans, basically. Um, but this system, like when I was designing this one, I was actually, I was looking at, at these, like I was looking at the Necromunda stuff and like how it sort of fits together. And I was imagining these, I was like, oh, they're like three inches high. And then these are, you know, like two inches wide and three inches high. And I could use that on a, on a grid system. Well, it's not. It's an incredibly fiddly system. Like, um, you know, I started designing my own stuff to go along with it. Like I, uh, like laser cut some stuff and did, um, just started designing my own stuff to go along with these. And um, it's such a fiddly little system, like there's how things key together. It's like even, even after spending all that time messing with it, you know, I still like somehow messed up how, how these uh, key together like exactly perfectly, even after doing like super, super precise little measurements. Uh, <laughs> and, um, I'm just, I'm pretty, uh, pretty uh, disappointed with how this stuff goes together. And it's expensive. You know, GW's plastic is pretty expensive. Um, and like, you know, they're, they're all this stuff that can go together, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. And it's not, it's not like an intuitive thing like you. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't work how I want it to. So, uh, so I kind of like went back to the drawing board with the stuff that I was designing myself, um, like my own kind of modular system. Um, and, uh, I was looking at other stuff that I had, you know, um, so I, I, I got this game a while ago, Core Space. And, uh, Core Space is, um, it's a skirmish game, like, kind of in a box. Um, if you did want to get started to play games like uh, like Rogue Stars or uh, Stargrave or, you know, like 
all kinds of games like that. Like it comes with um, it comes with a neoprene game mat, and these are inch grids. Like um, this is this is just kind of like this is like a two by two little neoprene game mat, and then everything on here is is on grids, one inch grids, and I love that, right? So it also comes with uh, tons and tons and tons of um, cardboard terrain. And this stuff is really great. It's like, it's really, really nice looking, um, great looking stuff. Um, but it doesn't like stand up on its own. And like, I kind of wanted to just like basically rip off their designs and make my own stuff that would, you know, like out of like MDF, um, where I could paint it and then it would stand up on its own and just make some little wall sections, like little, little four inch walls. And, uh, like, uh, after doing these, I, uh, I want to do, uh, more like, like this. Um, you know, that have like little windows in them and stuff like that. So basically I'm just gonna rip off um, uh, battle system stuff, making my own um, MDF designs. But um, yeah, so so things that I love about this stuff, right? It's, if you know, if you, if you were gonna get some of this stuff, it's it's all like totally pre you know pre-painted. It has its its own things that are printed on it. Core Space is a great game on its own, um, but uh, but also like um, it's just it's a good way to like get started. You know, if there's like games that you want to play where you just need to make some buildings and then have some little walls that like go together, this is a great system. So, uh, so yeah, like using, kind of keeping that in mind, like what I wanted from my system, I started to uh, design my own stuff that would go along with a, um, you know, a, a grid, a grid system where it's like, these are four inches wide, two inches tall, and then it can uh, plop down on a, on a one inch grid kind of game mat. So, uh, so yeah, I'm like, I've been, I've been really enjoying this stuff. And um, so like I started out just kind of doing, doing things like I normally would, you know, like I, uh, I sketch things out and um, I, uh, I was kind of like inspired by movies like, you know, Alien or um, uh, movies like uh, Pandorum where uh, like the sets that are in those movies, like they're, they're very sort of claustrophobic looking and uh, kind of um, like, I have a feeling that a lot of them were kind of recycled. <laughs> like there's, they just kind of rearranged parts of the set to make like different looking kind of sci-fi corridor areas. So I was inspired by stuff like that, but um, yeah, you know, I, and I sent everything over to the uh, to the laser cutter. I do have a laser cutter of my own, um, and uh, I um, I talked about this before. I've done a little bit of laser cutting on the channel before. Um, be be really careful when you're when you're doing laser cutting. Like, make sure that your your area is really well ventilated because, like, I. Um, I cut MDF. MDF has, um, it has formaldehyde in it. There's, there's formaldehyde in the formulation of what the glue is that sticks uh, MDF together. You do not want to breathe that stuff. Um, I cut styrene sometimes in my laser cutter. And um, I don't cut, you know, I the, like the maximum thickness that I'll cut with it is like one millimeter. Um, in fact, if, if you're really into doing styrene design stuff, I would really, really recommend just getting, uh, like a Cricut, uh, cutter, you know, like, um, um, 
one or like a silhouette like card uh, cardstock cutter because that will cut through um, one millimeter styrene and you can design stuff on that. Um, but uh, I'm just using uh, Tinkercad and uh, Tinkercad is a free online program and uh, it's a browser based uh, CAD system and it's not the most robust uh, best CAD system but it is free and it's online and it's a really really easy way to learn CAD um, if you wanted to learn CAD like they they have uh, lessons on it where um, they uh, teach you how to make like a chess piece and then a ring and like or you start out with something simple like making a six-sided dice and then you work your way up to more and more complex things doing their lessons but you will learn CAD um, and then they have an option where you can export things on there to uh, to a laser cuttable format which is SVG so uh, so yeah anyways that's the story <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna keep going with this stuff I'm gonna make a um, I'm gonna make a new playlist for um, I'm just gonna make a big modular uh, sci-fi board and I'm gonna make a new a new playlist on the channel so you know if you guys uh, are interested just uh, like comment subscribe <laughs> or subscribe and then uh, I'm gonna post more um, m making more stuff for this modular system like I'm gonna start with walls and then I'm gonna build like you know, uh, rooftops and like different kinds of things that will like fit together, like columns and um, like, uh, you know, all kinds of random sci-fi crap. But, uh, but yeah, all right. So let's, uh, let's make some stuff. So I was playing around with my, uh, with my laser settings. I changed the water in my, um, in my laser and then all of a sudden the, the power went down. I was having trouble getting through MDF. So um, these are just, none of these like went all the way through and it took a fair amount of cleanup to like, just to get these to this point. So I'm gonna save all these wall pieces but I'm gonna recut these cause it's just like, these are, are a real pain in the butt to clean up. Um, and then I think I might, I don't know, I haven't made up my mind, I think I might actually do these out of styrene. Um, because there's a few, like I want these to have a little more support, like going this way, Maybe this way too. Um, so, but this, you know, there's this the, the prototype stage, and I have lots and lots of MDF lying around. So, I'm gonna recut some stuff. Okay, so. All right, so I. Uh, Messed with my lasers settings a little bit, you know, perfect cuts. Um, <clears throat> it's not my laser. This was like the first, the first one that I did. Just uh, need to do a little bit of maintenance. So glad about that. My laser isn't destroyed. Um, <clears throat> so I did, I did cut some some styrene ones, and. Um, it's interesting like with the laser, so if you can see, this is just built up a little teeny tiny bit on this side, and then it, the, the focus is just slightly out of whack, so it didn't cut these on this side as well. But then I tried the um, engraving settings, and uh, this, is, um, this is engraved. Um, it's pretty hard to see, I'll just... I'll just go ahead and cut this. Uh, but, um, 
I might just start doing this in the future, just doing the engraving. Because, you know, since it's styrene, um, it doesn't it doesn't have a horrendous odor. Supposedly it's you know it's safe as long as your your shop is your area is well vented. Um, but better safe than sorry. And then um, and when you when you do like cut it, you get these kind of rolled edges, um, which isn't a, necessarily a bad thing for if you're going for like a rolled steel kind of welded look, but it's not clean. <clears throat> but you can see that these like the little teeny tiny tolerances in here. So it's a little bit, it seems like it is like a little bit more accurate. There's a little less burning than with the laser cuts. But I'm gonna try these different, um, different pieces. And then I uh, I cut these. Um, this is you know this is styrene again, um, but I cut these to glue on to uh, these pieces like that to kind of give them some extra stability. And then I tried to rework them for to do MDF. Like I changed my design a little bit and I left those on there, but I don't hate it at all. Like just having a little thin piece of styrene on top to kind of reinforce things. Um, so, some stuff to play with. So still kind of in the prototyping phase, but I will go ahead and glue at least one of these up. So I'm going to grab some things for doing some things that I like for using with MDF to glue things. Okay, so uh, when I'm working with uh, MDF, I always like to have three types of super glue on hand. So my favorite brand is uh, Gorilla. This is um, this is the really thick stuff. This is a gel, so it's like it's a very mm -hmm. thick consistency. And uh, when you kind of shake it, shake it up, it uh, sort of loosens up a little bit. This is you know sort of medium consistency. If you can see that in there. It, uh, you know, this is this is really good stuff. Um, Gorilla does not make a thin CA glue. This is uh, thin, and it's um, about the consistency of water. So, you know, they're they're different thicknesses. Um, so MDF, because it's a, a wood product, you know. Um, it soaks up super glue like, well, like a sponge. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use some of this um, kind of medium thickness stuff in some of the these joints, like right here. So, pop that on. And then I can kind of reinforce things with the, uh, the thin stuff, and it will just sort of flow into those uh, joints and just like water. Just like that. And that creates a pretty tough bond. In fact, like the, it seems like the CA glue sort of makes the uh, MDF a little bit stronger. Um, <clears throat> so. Just 
we'll go around, do that. And then, um, another thing you can do if you really want to like speed up the process is, uh, you can spray them with some cyanoacrylate activator. should have somewhere. So this is just, um, it's a super glue accelerator. And you can even kind of like take one of your parts like this. Soak it with a little bit of this stuff and then put it onto the other one. And it will just harden like that. That glue will just harden like instantly. Let me make sure I have a good right angle. Okay. Now that that's sort of in place, I'm gonna reinforce uh, this side. See, this is this is what I was worried about. Is this um, this part kind of being loose and like? wobbling around uh, like if when I when I throw this stuff in a bin for storage I'm just gonna use this little strip of styrene on here so that should sort of reinforce things Keep everything, you know, keep those right angles and then keep it, keep things from like snapping off later. Another right angle. Okay, and now I've got these, uh, Let's see, these are 3.2 millimeter uh, rods. And I thought I measured, well, they're just tight. <laughs> so the, um, I'm just gonna have to like, um, make these holes the right size. I could shove them through there. I'm sure it's fine. I'm just gonna stick this little file through here. Open these up a little bit. It's all gonna be worth it, I swear. Yeah, I like it. So before I make up my mind, <laughs> uh, I want to try one of these out of styrene to see how it looks. It's pretty fiddly, but you know, with all these little reinforcing pieces everywhere, it's going to be pretty strong. I want to see how it looks.
Yeah, I mean, it looks cool. It's a little bit too fiddly. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna stick with the MDF. This is just a pain. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of these guys. I'm not gonna use those. And I'm gonna go with this. Yeah, I like it. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm using a nail file, I'm just gonna knock down the, the sides to get all this part flush. It's not gonna be visible, but I do want it flush. Like ideally all these sections are gonna be hidden by walls. I could fill these in a little better, but None of this is really supposed to be visible. before that I really liked. I took these, um, this uh, aquarium tubing stuff and then I stuck it through one of these little openings. Ooh, that's tight. Um, and, uh, and then put the, um, put this through. So this stuff, let's see this up. Yeah. You know, I measured it, and then I do like that though. It looks like um, like a a light or like some like plasma, like neon, like flowing through a tube or something. To a different color though, but this stuff is way more expensive. I use it more sparingly. It's acrylic, not styrene. Um, Let's see if this looks just like a fluorescent light. Hmm. I like that. I like how that looks. That's cool. Um, but I think the, the, yeah, like the red plasma probably looks the best. really stands out. Like I was kind of going for this look like this, uh, I don't know, like aircraft carrier interior look. <laughs> uh, generic sci-fi. But um, yeah, I'm gonna cut some of this stuff down and put that through there.
because that's super tight. So I, I cut down some of this um, this acrylic stuff. It's it's a lot more expensive, you know, than the styrene. So I kind of use it a little more sparingly. Um, and I want these to be like pipes. And then this maybe like is sort of more like a light source. In fact, I'm gonna wait to put that in there. I'm, I'm gonna do some like weathering on the inside of this stuff. But this is just, um, this is aquarium airline tubing. Um, and then it's it's pieces of acrylic that are the right size kind of shoved in there. But it looks like, um, I don't know, like a neon tube or something, or um, some like a plasma pipe or something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna use, let's see, use some streaking grime. Okay, yeah, I've got some uh, streaking grime, winter streaking grime. And then I'm just gonna put this all over, kind of on like, pipes and stuff um, and like in the corners and just kind of let it run over things and uh, dirty it up a little bit. So this is an enamel. Um, so it takes way longer to dry and then you can just kind of brush it on and like do some weathering stuff and then um, it will stay like wet and uh, and then I can um, uh, push it around with um, some uh, mineral spirits. But it's really gonna like dirty everything up and give it a more weathered look. Dingy dirty. Now I can take like a paper towel or something and kind of take off some of the, the stuff that's on the surface. And it's just gonna give it that kind of dirty look, that oily, like dirty. some like chipping stuff. I'm gonna use some uh, P3 uh, bloodstone. So I'm just gonna take this little sponge. This is like just a piece of um, a, uh, I don't know, like a foam insert thing. And then I'm gonna dab off a little bit and just put some on the, like, the edges for like chipped paint. anywhere that would receive like wear and tear. And then next I'm gonna take a pretty fine brush. Um, and then just do some little Chips paint, chip the chip paint spots where like metal is showing through. Um, let's see. 
I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, game color gunmetal. And just like kind of dab it into some little areas to look, make it look like the paint is kind of chipped off and just a little bit of metal showing through. Cover up the rust a little bit too. I don't know, it still just looks a little too clean. Uh, I'm gonna use some pigments. This really crapped out brush. And then this is just like burnt umber, it's just um, pan pastels. So it just kind of looks like, like dirt. It's kind of collected in some places. Kind of subtle. It goes away a little bit when you seal things too. And if you don't seal them down, then they just kind of come off, you know, when they're being handled. Or played with or whatever. Just want to dirty things up a little bit. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, pretty much the look I was going for. Looks cool, I like it. Now I just need a whole bunch of these walls. Yeah, it's a cool system, I like it. I'm gonna make more.